Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Saturday over here in the Atlantic. We were tracking dawn last night. May landfall south of Corpus Christi, and then when it went inland, it was literally like someone blew out a candle is how I would describe it. All the clouds disappeared. The area is so dry that the inflow into the small storm just made it die, and the convection just literally disappeared. You could see it on both satellite and radar. The rain just fizzled and went away over southern Texas, which is unfortunate because these folks were looking forward to a little bit more rain. But dawn was weakening at landfall and just couldn't hold it together. The old vortice is now over here near the border of Mexico and won't be bringing a whole lot of rain to any more folks, unfortunately. If we look back down here to the Caribbean, we're a little bit interesting area of, of thunderstorms here, but not expecting development with this very broad. We'll be moving westward into Central America, not expecting a lot with this except some heavy rain. The big story that's probably going to become a pretty big story here shortly is 91L sitting over here in the Central Atlantic. I posted on my Facebook wall last night that this would become Emily. I am still convinced that this will and we'll probably have no trouble becoming a tropical storm before reaching the Leeward Antilles Islands in a couple of days by either late tomorrow night or sometime on Monday. And uh, this is still a little bit of an elongated system. If we go into the floater here, it's elongated east to west with several vortices. There is one spinning off. Where is it? It's right here. There's one spinning off there. There may be another one to the east. The main vortice is probably in the middle of the two right here where there's a little bit of a pronounced spin. The convective mass is still very broad broad and spread out. This will take its time developing here. It's got some dry air around it to the northwest over in here that it will have to be dealing with as it comes towards the islands. But the NHC is also saying this has a high development chance, and I agree, as this will be coming west-northwest towards the leewards and will probably be Emily by that time. I don't think we have a chance for a hurricane by then. It's too short of a time frame, but it will likely be a named storm and has a shot at becoming the first hurricane of this season if it can avoid some big islands like Hispaniola over here, which would knock it down and make its chances a lot slimmer. Now if we go over to the model tracks here, number one concern right now is the bunching up near the Leeward Islands. This is our number one concern. These folks are going to get hit first, and again, probably by a tropical storm, though folks should be prepared in case it gets strong enough, strong tropical storm, maybe by the time it gets there, possibly. It depends on how fast it tries to consolidate and organize, but folks should be prepared just in case it's a little stronger than logic would dictate right now in the Leewards. Next stop may be Puerto Rico and the Virgin islands here. Um, the models are taking it right over that area, possibly something to deal with for Puerto Rico as well. So we're going to have to, these folks are going to have to prepare for the potential of a storm within the next couple of days, three days. And Hispaniola is also possibly in the mix here based on the models. Now, folks are going to be focusing after these guys here. We're going to be wondering about the United States and the Bahamas and Hispaniola and Cuba and all these folks back here further to the west. Are they getting this storm? Well, the, the models that develop the system end up curving it out like this, out to sea, because there's a trough that's going to be diving in off the eastern seaboard that is going to be trying to pick this up. However, there are a couple of models farther west, like the UK Met, which takes it over Hispaniola, the No Gaps, which takes it over Hispaniola and Cuba, and the European is also in there as well. And we're going to talk a little bit about the possibilities that this tries to come farther west. Now first off here we're going to look at the GFS. I'm going to show you guys a loop of the sea level pressure forecast from the GFS. We're going to start this over here and we're going to watch potential Emily coming across Puerto Rico here and starting to curve out. Now watch this. See how it stalls here for a good three days at the end of the loop. I'm going to run that again. Watch what happens as it starts coming north. See it stall right there by the end of the loop? It ends at day 8. Now eventually what happens is the GFS does eventually move the storm out to sea here, but it stalls it for a good long while, several days right here southwest of Bermuda, and there is a reason why it does that, and the reason is cause for uncertainty with where the track is going to be. Whenever you see the model showing a storm stalling out in weak steering currents, it means that there is uncertainty and there are possibilities, multiple ones, for where the storm could go. If you look at the 500 millibar forecast, day four from the GFS, we have a big trough diving in off the eastern seaboard trailing down here. Here is where Emily should be, near, the, near Puerto Rico in the Leeward Islands by day four can see it right here and with this configuration it looks like a sure recurve right here 
is what it looks like. Now, this trough, similar to the trough that was supposed to be curved on, is going to be sticking around for a very short while and eventually lifting out pretty fast, again, because there is a double short wave structure with it. And if we go out to day six, look what happens. The trough is leaving out here. And the ridge is trying to nose back into the north of what would be Emily over here northeast of the Bahamas. Now, at this point on the model, it looks like Emily is a little bit too far northeast to actually catch this ride into the southeast US coast and so eventually after stalling here for about three days eventually gets picked up and heads off to the northeast and just kinda sits here for a little while before getting carted off. Now if we go over to the European the colors here represent 500 millibar level heights and the white lines are mean sea level pressure. This is day day six. Here's that trough leaving to the northeast here. The ridge is trying to build back in. Now, here's where the European has the wave. Right in here, near or south of Cuba, by day six. Now, this may be cause for alarm for some people. However, there is a very important distinction between the models that have it here and the models that have it farther up. The no gaps also has it in here. And if we go to the, I think I threw the UK Met in here. Yeah, I did. This is the UK Met day six has it here. It's also got the wave sticking down here, so really it could be anywhere in this region right here, a little bit farther southwest. These models all show it being an open wave in here, not a closed low, not a developing hurricane. There's a distinction there. If it's a weaker system, it's going to try to come farther west-northwest, which is a typical rule of thumb we're used to talking about with these systems. The steering currents are more likely to steer storms poleward most of the time if they become stronger. Hurricanes like to to, for lack of a better way to describe it, feel the trough more when they are strong and thus try to recurve more often. If they're weaker, they move farther west. So these are that's something to keep in mind. If this develops, the stronger it gets, the more it's going to want to recurve. So these models that show it not developing may be a little bit too far west based on that intensity. However, there are some things to notice about all of these models which I'm going to tie together. If we go back to the GFS, here's that trough again on day four. Notice that it dips down really far here pretty amplified at the beginning and notice that this short wave is lifting out meaning that the base of this trough is leaving the jet is leaving which means guess what this piece is probably not going to make the ride it's going to be left behind here so if we go out 24 hours check it out it's a trough split it splits off the trough leaves this gets left behind here near Florida and if we go out to day 7 it starts retrograding westward into the Gulf of Mexico the worry here is that if Emily, or what would be Emily, is just a couple of degrees farther south in here by this time, that it would try to follow this upper low as it retrogrades westward across the Gulf, and the pull from this upper low would help pull it west-northwest towards the Bahamas and the southeast U.S. coastline as this little sliver of a ridge builds to the north of it once this trough leaves before the next one comes in. That's the concern here. The European shows the trough split as well right in here, north of the north of the wave that would be Emily, except not Emily on this model here. So a little bit different configuration, but you can see that there's the trough split in here. It's not just a GFS feature. The UK Met also showing the trough split. This red cutoff line here is a trough split of 500 millibars as this trough leaves to the northeast. And these trough splits will be retrograding westward on each model. And then we can see that on the UK Met, the trough split weakens, but should be in here by this time as the tropical wave is in here moving west-northwest in the back side of that trough split. So there is concern here that with the model showing weak steering currents in this area, it's going to be a close call. It's going to be depending on both what will be Emily's intensity and whether the trough comes in deep enough, the timing, everything is going to be close with this one, just like it was with Don. I'm not ready to sell myself on one of these solutions right now, but what I'm showing you guys, as I always do, is all of the models show recurvature for the most part right now. It is worth people needing to know that there is the possibility for it to come farther west. Folks need to be aware of that in case it actually happens. So our first concern right now is Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands and the Leeward Antilles in here. My loop died, but this area is going to be impacted first. We will be watching for that first of all as this system moves west-northwest, and then we will be able to think about these areas in case they may get affected as well. Bermuda may be thrown in the mix too if it recurves fast enough. We will see. There's only the possibility right now that it comes farther west. We will have to see. I want to see how strong it is when it gets in here first. 
I want to see what it looks like in here, where it's going, how strong it's going to get, uh, to see if it may recurve or not. So we will be watching this very closely over the next several days. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.